Good evening. I'd like to call to order the September 23rd, 2024 Parks and Recreation Committee meeting. Uh, I'm Commissioner Nick Scull. To my left is Commissioner Anthony uh, uh, Benvenuti and ben, Benjamin Olszewski uh, is not feeling well tonight. Uh, Kate Kohler, our Director of Parks and Recreation. Brianna Bryant, our re legal representative. Pat Stacio, our uh, director. And I think that's it. <coughs> um, are there any presentations or announcements? There are none this evening. Um, any public comments? And approval of the minutes from July 2024. Any corrections? Okay, we'll move this ahead. Okay, well, we're just zipping along here. Uh, monthly reports, parks and recreation. Thank you, Commissioner. Some highlights from July and August. Um, our Farmstead Park paving project has been completed. Uh, Public Works finished that up last month. Um, with um, we have to still paint the lines, but all of the paving uh, has been complete for that. Um, we are preparing to submit the documents to DCNR grant for reimbursement now. Also, um, Woodlawn Park, um, the Board of Commissioners approved the cost proposal last month. Um, we did meet with Simone Collins uh, to walk the site and um, discuss some items that we want to address um, for, the, for those to be able to, to obtain those construction documents for phase one. Um, also, committee-wise, Parks and Rec Advisory Council, I just want to note we did add two new Parks and Rec uh, Council members um, this summer. Uh, also, the Maintenance Division, um, our staff continues to um, work extremely hard to um, to keep the parks in order. Um, they've prepared sites for summer camps, um, everything from removing dead animals to removing trash to moving tables, whatever we ask, um, they complete. And uh, I did include a chart there for you to review. And I just like to note um, the response times of our maintenance team. When a, a complaint is fielded in our office, um, you know, we address it and, mm -hmm. and try to fix it in a timely manner. Is there a, num a number with that last time? Um, not necessarily. It depends when the complaints come in. Sometimes it's weekends and, you know, we can't get to it till, till Monday. But a lot of times you'll see it's within a day or two of the initial complaint. At least it's addressed, if not a solution um, proposed. What I would expect, and that's how it's always been. Yep. Um, Recreational Division, uh, we had our, well, we were preparing for our fall frolic tween dance, which actually occurred last Friday. Uh, we filled that dance, uh, had 75 youngsters out rocking and rolling last Friday night. Um, we also um, met at Fair Oaks to discuss um, one of the neighbors uh, of that park had some questions about the basin. So we are trying to develop um, like an environmental meet and greet. Um, session out there with the neighbors um so hopefully that uh, that will occur in october and we'll just discuss the basin and the environmental factors and um, get the community excited about it um, and uh, lastly our concert series wrapped up uh, the end of august jen hardigan our recreation coordinator um, she coordinated the eight concerts this year and they were all really well received once again I'd be happy to answer any other questions you may have about well, the monthly report. I'm concerned. I understand there was a break-in at the farmstead in the barn. I want to know the status of, of that. So I did discuss with um, a police officer today the possibility of those uh, youths entering the um, YAP program, um, youth assistance program, I want to say. Um, so we're working with them um, to come up with a reasonable consequence mm -hmm. for their actions. We did assess the damage. Um, unfortunately, the damage that, was occur that occurred was um, to some irreplaceable items um, because they are, you know, it, it's a historical site and um, the window that was broken um, 
was specific to that building was and the palladium window was it the what palladium window the one at the top of the no. no it was the new window that was just installed in july closer to the carriage house right. um so we're working with with the officers to, to come up with a solution. Farmstead Alliance is, is involved in this investigation as well. Um, we're hopeful to find something that appeases all parties. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And we're insured. We're insured. <laughs> well, that's all. Uh, I'll say that's all good news, but I'm glad it's under control. Um, are there any community comments? Yeah, let's move on to the library board. Good evening. Thank you. Diane Walton. I live Diane. on uh, Silver Avenue, Willow Grove. <clears throat> <clears throat> the library September, September flyer was included in your packet and you should have received the October flyer mm -hmm. around the 15th of September. Thank you for sharing this information with your constituents via your email list and social media channels. <clears throat> Nearly 500 participants joined the library's 2024 summer quest between June 20th and August 17th. Participants read a combined, a combined total of 4,044 hours, which equates to 168 and a half days. Participation was up 37% 30, over 2023. The library will have an open board seat starting in January 2025 for a three-year term. The library board consists of seven volunteer members elected by the board and two appointed commissioners. Volunteer board members attend the monthly board meeting on the second Wednesday of the month and serve on at least one committee. Committees meet anywhere from two to three times a year to monthly, depending on need. For a relatively small time commitment, Upper Moreland residents can give back to the community, support the important work the library does, and have a rewarding volunteer experience. Information on how to apply can be found on the library's website at umfpl.org slash board hyphen applications. The library will be closed for business on election day, November 5th, 2024. With increased voter turnout this year, we want to be certain that there is a space in the parking lots for Ward 4 voters at the library and the township buildings. The Library Board of Trustees has voted to update the library hours in 2025. After hearing from the community that morning library hours are vital, and reviewing our hourly door counts, our 2025 business hours will be Monday through Thursday from 10 a.m. to 8 p.m., Friday and Saturday from 10 a.m. to 5 p.m., and Sunday from 1 to 5 p.m. This will increase our total weekly hours from 56 to 58. Finally, I want to mention that we're having our annual picnic for library staff, board members, and our friends executive committee at Pavilion Number no. 2 at Masons Mill Park this Friday at 5.15 p.m. We would welcome any of our commissioners as well as uh, Township Manager Mrs. Mr. Stacio to stop by and share a meal with us generously provided by the Friends of the Library. <clears throat> any questions? Would you repeat, repeat those uh, library hours for the weekdays? Sure. Uh, Monday through Thursday from 10 a.m. to 8 p.m. Friday and Saturday from 10 a.m. to 5 p.m. and Sunday from 1 to 5 p.m. Uh, that's wonderful. Uh, are we back to uh, pre-COVID hours? Not, not quite, but that's our goal to eventually get there. Yeah, very close. I know there were, I can't tell you, watching people walk across the parking lot, shake the door, shake their fist. <laughs> yes, I'm, I'm glad to hear that. Thank you. Well, thank you. Mm -hmm. All right. Um, no old business. We have some new business, the Powerline Trail Professional Services Proposal. Kate. 
Thank you, Commissioner. Hopefully uh, you had a moment to take a look at the proposal and um, review my agenda summary. Um, this is a proposal for uh, Bowman to provide engineering services for the proposed power line trail um, over by Johnstown Village. Um, the proposal will provide engineering services for completing the permitting and final design for the power line trail along Pico Utility Corridor. It's from Blair Mill Road to Maryland Avenue um, at the Jamestown Village Apartments. The scope also includes additional plan prep preparation and project documentation related tasks that require for the TSA grant funding for construction, which is uh, transportation alternatives, alternatives set aside funding. Um, so the project outlines um, 12 tasks to be completed. Um, I can go over those if you'd sure. like me to. Okay, so um, first task is, is a supplemental survey. So they would uh, provide and um, report back any findings from, from a supplemental survey. Um, number two was engineering and safety review of the site. Um, number three is des um, design the flashing beacon on Maryland Road so pedestrians could, would be able to cross safely. Um, number four, they do the environmental study and clearances for the proposed trail and crossings. Um, number five, environmental permitting, because there is a waterway um, that this proposed trail will be, will be crossing. Um, so along with that, number six, um, the hydrologic and hydraulic um, reporting for the Pennypack Creek. And that's that I believe is about three pages of this proposal um, for you to take a look at and review. Um, number seven, preliminary structural design, um, not only for the trail, but there at that crossing, that waterway crossing, we'd have to decide, you know, how we want to, mm -hmm. what structure we'd like um, to complete that. Number eight, geotechnical engineering, um, which is lab testing and boring and all. Um, number nine, subsurface utility design, because there are some buried um, pico lines out there. <clears throat> number 10, um, another big one, uh, the PennDOT project delivery. So they would take care of uh, presenting the plan once adopted to PennDOT um, for their approval before moving forward. Um, and number 11 is general project management for this project, um, anticipated for 24 months, two years. And then uh, finally, uh, they would hold the meetings and proper property owner coordination um, with any, any adjacent properties or anybody that they'd have to speak with uh, regarding this. What's, what's the estimated cost? Uh, the estimated cost is uh, six hundred and fifteen, well, six hundred and fourteen thousand six hundred dollars. This is for the engineering. I, uh, Hi. Um, so this is a significant project in terms of all that work and the money. Um, so I guess it seems like we should kind of wait until budget time till we update our capital improvement budget and see what the we're going to go after for the next bond because we don't have room in the current bond funds, right? That's correct. And, and I think that's the recommendation from the director is to do that. It is a large number. I would agree. It is. The project itself is $2.4 million, which will be completely funded by grants. Um, the difficulty with this project is it's dealing with PennDOT and some of the requirements that PennDOT has for their projects um, increase our costs. Got However, it. this is a, a big percentage of, and, and, it, and we cannot use the grant to subsidize any of these costs. Any of these costs. Um, are there other grants that might be able to help or working with the county? Because I would think that this is a really important piece of trail for to the county too, right? It had been identified. This project has been consider, in consideration since about 2010 to complete or help um, connect the cross county trail. Uh, there are some possible other grant opportunities through DCNR, um, Green Region. We, you know, we have some uh, some opportunities to to go up to go after additional funding. Do you feel like we can wait? Like the the grant we have for the construction, can that? Go ahead. Yes, I believe I believe we can wait. Um, 
the uh, TASA grants, I think when Kate and I met with the folks, they're, they're saying it would be probably a two to three years before this project begins. Um, I know in other municipalities, sometimes those task grants took a little longer for the project to come. So I think certainly uh, DCNR grants and county grants are due next spring. I think that gives us ample time to apply for those grants uh, to try to move this forward. However, do you think it is something the board should consider if, if they're interested in moving this, this project forward? just in case the grants don't come through. I'm sorry, you think the board should consider? I think we should talk about it at budget time to see okay. how it would fit into our budget okay. and how it would affect our budgets. Okay. Um, however, I do believe that the director should move forward with any grant opportunities with assist with this. The difficulty is mm -hmm. in the grant opportunities is that this is for engineering only. And uh, DCNR usually has some money available for trails engineering, uh, but it's not a grant that, that you typically get. Planning grants, um, Engineering, maybe not quite so much. Got you. And I guess is this this is not on the county list for them to do. This is not. They're coming down Computer Road county. behind down Maryland and behind mm -hmm. Jamestown Village. This would be mm -hmm. a spur, but to your point, it's it's an extremely important spur because it connects the Cross County Trail to the Powerline right. Trail in Horsham. So. Um, the funding for the project is taken care of. It's the funding for the engineering that yeah. will present a challenge for us. Okay. Well, I certainly do support this piece of the trail. I mean, these trails have just been amazing for so many residents. They get used a lot. Um, so thank you for your work on this. And I guess, so should we just keep it on the agenda for now? I think I agree with, the, with Kate's um, decision or recommendation to to move it for discussion points at the budget at here the budget. at budget meetings. I don't know Sounds that we good. need to leave it on the agenda. I don't think there'll be other things to talk about until after we decide what we want to do. Okay. Thank you. Uh, like Pat said, we've been at this since 2010, acquiring grounds, leases, and everything else. Uh, at 600000 for a, a, basically a $2.5 million project, uh, for, those, for that number that we would be paying, it might be worth getting an RFP for this and check out some real numbers uh, for that. So when we get closer to budget or whatever, uh, I, I think it might give us some opportunities to maybe save money to at least have competing bids on this, uh, being this, that, that high of a number for 600,000. Uh, so I think, I hope you just anticipate maybe doing that. We might be able to drop some, but in the meantime, get as much money as you can <laughs> with the grants. So, because I, I think we're going to continue with this. I think we, we should. I mean, we spent, you know, 12 years already. So it's just a matter of how we do it. And that's why you're here, Katie. <laughs> Thank you. Uh, so the suggestion is uh, when we get a number, we'll, we'll bid this out. I think I think we have a solid number. I think what Commissioner uh, McFatridge is suggesting that we go out for an RFP to see if there's other companies or other engineers would like to bid. Perhaps they're going to come in lower. Perhaps they're not. Um, so uh, Kate and I can work together to come up with an RFP to send out to um, some firms. That's what I meant. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> All right. Um, I see no other items. Are there any? Uh, Commissioner comments or public comments? I'm sorry. I'm oh. Hello, Susan. <laughs> I'm the commissioner. It's good to see you. Sue Earth, the man of Ward 6. Uh, I was asked to ask, and I should have asked when the library was giving its report, but there is some buzz in the uh, Facebook world about an infestation in the library and also a concern which I bring as a Human Relations Commission member about uh, homeless people using the library and how we can be more responsive to that. Um, Pat, I, you're already looking at me. Yeah, I, I think you may have come in a little late to this meeting. We I'm made sorry. an announcement this morning that the library uh, will be closed through Thursday. There's uh, exterminators and a there's other sources in other that we're, that we're investigating at mm -hmm. the library to see if what is being said on Facebook is in, indeed true. Mm -hmm. um, okay. At this point, I have no reason to doubt it, but we're going to bring in professionals to take a look at that. And if it is, if there is a problem, 
will take care of that problem as well. The library board has, has agreed to that. On top of all that. And, and the, the issue I did note in our public safety response, which I was also late for, of course, sorry about that, I was working, um, that we have greater contacts with the unhoused, uh, I think it was 11 and now it's like 15. Um, so we do the point in time count, uh, Commissioner Lockhart and I have done that in at least two occasions. That'll be probably January again, I think. Um, so do you see an increase in that, in that issue that a greater response might be required of us? That's a human relations commission question. Yeah. I'm tacking you, it on. You know, in our attempt to have a, something for homeless people in, in this county, <laughs> yes, in this sir. Township, um, I haven't heard um, Kaylee Silver in a long time. Maybe Cheryl can respond. Yeah, we've worked with the county to see if we could get a code blue shelter in our area. It's needed. Um, I don't have any good news for you at this time. The county's not going around and opening local shelters, but we're trying to find a solution. Um, thank you. Thank you, Commissioner. Um, I, I think that maybe the, in a talk with you, um, Director, uh, Manager, <laughs> sorry, Pat, uh, about what the Human Relations Commission might send a letter to the commissioners of the county in regard to that need. Um, are we still using the police department lobby, by the way? Mm -hmm. We are. Okay. Good to know. Thank you. Mm -hmm. yeah. Just to summarize for the, the public, uh, there are very few programs operating anywhere in the county. The county doesn't take uh, responsibility for, you know, particularly housing or any long-term solutions. Um, there's a number you can call and uh, you know refer for services and that kind of thing, but there's no facility. And uh, Cheryl and I have worked uh, with a large group and with people from the county to try and develop some kind of program. And there are there are programs running, um, not around here, not in Abington or Upper Moreland, or Upper Dublin or any, anywhere close to us, I guess. Um, Anyway, it's a need, and it's all this uh, not in my backyard stuff. Yeah, it's, um, and even the, the government, you know, they, they, want to, they want to do a problem. They want to solve the problem. They want to build more housing. But, you know, before we have housing, we have to have services. Uh, and people are living in our police station in wintertime. And I think if, if you've been to the post office, they now lock the lobby at night uh, because people were sleeping in the post office lobby. Anyway, are there any other comments, concerns? Well, on that unhappy note, uh, we're adjourned.